Welcome to Sethcraft. I just received my Thunder Laser Nova 35 100 watt CO2 laser. This was quite an adventure to get from the side of the road where they delivered it into my studio here and set everything up. So I hope you enjoy this video of seeing my full process of getting the laser and having it do its first test cut. So let's go ahead and jump into the video. There are both wheels and feet here on the Nova 35. It's a little hard to see under there because it's so dark. You're able to use a wrench to undo these bolts here on the lower side to lift this up off the pallet. Once it's loose enough, you can then use your hand just to pull this up some. All right, I'm gonna unlock the wheels here. I've got the last one. I'm gonna try to roll this off of this little uh, ramp that I made. It's either gonna go super smooth and nice, or this is about to be a disaster. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, disaster. <laughs> Hope it's okay after all that drop. I think the moral of the story is, you gotta have a bigger ramp. Luckily the base has enough uh, clearance that it doesn't hit the ground when it comes off of here. Okay, here we go. Mm, man, that's rough. I don't like that at all. The Nova 35 is now in my laser room. I have a separate video showing you how I flipped this up, took the base off, and then wheeled it through my doorways to get it in here. I also have a separate video where I installed a pass-through through my wall to allow for the fume extraction. So, that being said, let's get back to work here on the Thunder Laser. Let me show you the other things that are shipped with the laser, and then we will get it set up and do our first test cut. These are the items that are also included with the Thunder Laser. First of all, we have an air compressor for the air assist. We've got the inline fan, which will take the fumes from the machine outside. That comes with two different flexible hoses. Down here is the chiller to keep this whole system cool. And lastly, a toolbox with some pretty cool stuff in it. Let's go ahead and unbox all this and take a look at it. The air compressor is used for the air assist on the laser, and that will blow down and hopefully keep the laser from burning things. Now the foam on the back is meant to be saved. Let's pull that off. The system will sit down in there and will not vibrate against the floor, and it will be a lot quieter that way. It's got a couple of tubes on there. The foam, I'm gonna place the feet into that foam and that should make a nice quiet motor there so it won't be vibrating against the floor. Inside the air blower, we've got a couple of hose clamps and then we have the blowing fan. 
little instruction manual and some mounting hardware. Also includes the flexible tubes. We may cut this down a little bit if they're too long. We'll have to see. Now it's chiller time. Let's see what we got in here. Oh no. The inlet, outlet, alarm, power going in right there, drain, it's got two big fans and an indicator for uh, water level. So alarm down here, normal and full. On the top, you can unscrew this for filling the unit. I'll have to go get some distilled water to put in there. And then if we turn over here to this other side, looks like it's got a display on the front and then a power button. And lastly, I have a little toolbox to show you. It's a tackle box, basically. You open this up and there are a few things that can be used for maintenance. And if you open the bottom here, there is the large 20 amp power cord. You got another power cord, which will probably go to the chiller. You've got uh, some Q-tips for cleaning. Here are hoses that we'll have to use for the chiller. And let's see what we got here. A nice long USB cable, which hopefully it's long enough to reach all the way over to my computer. We got a little dropper, a little cutter. Here is information cable. We'll pull that out as well. And it uh, looks like maybe communication or power for one of the devices. Some cleaning solution. So very cool. I think we'll also need these zip ties here in just a moment for the install as well. Let's begin installing the chiller. I've got this on the left side of the laser if you're looking at it from the front. This unit comes with these white colored tubes. So the inlet on the chiller is going to be attached to the water out of the laser. So out of the laser into the chiller. You can also see that it's green to green and then orange to orange. So the water in of the laser is going to be the water out of the chiller. Be sure to keep those straight there. Now this unit also does come with some zip ties and so I can use those to go around here and that will help lock down those tubes so they don't come loose on you. This is the alarm cable here. I'm going to remove the plastic cover over here on the alarm and then I can take this and match up those holes, tighten it down, and then likewise go over here to this side and get it attached into the laser and tighten that down. Lastly, I have the power cord. This end here is gonna go into the chiller. And then over here, it's gonna to go to this plug right up here and it should lock down and make a snap whenever it's made a good connection. The last thing I'm gonna do is put distilled water into the chiller. In order to fill up the chiller, I'm going to remove the cap on the top and I have got regular distilled water that I bought from the local store. Now, everybody online uses a funnel for this. Let's see how important that is. It actually is pretty important. <laughs> I could not find a funnel, but I did find this measuring cup, so that should be sufficient. But yes, a funnel would make this process a little easier. I'm going to keep adding water like that, and we'll check the display over here. Next, we'll work with the air compressor. This one kind of works on both sides of the machine. The air tube is gonna go on the left side and the power will go on the right. Before we hook up the power, let's go ahead and attach the hose. Now this can be set down into the foam and then this tube will simply go up here and be pressed into this spot right here. Now on the right side of the laser, right here in the middle is the output for the air pump. I'm going to want to mount the air handler for the exhaust onto the wall, but if you'll notice, there's really no way to get to those mounting holes. What I have to do is actually unscrew these support brackets here, and then it'll allow the 
mounting bracket to come loose. So let's go ahead and loosen these up all the way. Now I'm able to access that mounting bracket from the inside. Now that I have the blower fan installed with the arrows going in this direction, I'm going to use some of this flexible tube here to go from the blower out to my vent over here, which was installed in a different video. Uh, first of all, remember to put your hose clamp on before putting the hose on. Next, I'm gonna take the other hose clamp, put it over the hose, and then this will go on my six inch exhaust port, which goes outside. It's gonna be a very tight fit. I'll have to come back in a minute and show you what it looks like. I went to the store and bought another one of these hose clamps. This is a six and a half inch, in case you were needing to buy one for yourself. Looks like it's just the right size to go around here. See how well this fits on the Thunder. There we go, not too bad. There are two last connections to be made on the back of the machine. One of them is the power for the blower. I'm gonna go ahead and just plug that up. And the last one is the 20 amp for going from the wall over to the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the machine up here and plug this up over here. Here we go. With all the connections on the back of the machine made, it's time to pull the foam protection off of the CO2 tube. Let's go ahead and open up back here, lift this up, and then the protective foam can be removed here. Should just uh, have to pull here and it will get that out of the way. back together. Now this unit did come with several keys so I think what I'm going to do is leave this one plugged up right there and if I ever need to find a spare key I will have it right there. Now it's time to push everything against the wall which means I need to be mindful of the air compressor and also the tank that I have for my chiller needs to go up under here on this side so I'll have to scoot things in this direction and then pick that up first to go up under here. But for now, let's just begin slowly moving this into position. Luckily, it's not too heavy. I'm not working with a lot of room over here, so I'm having to crawl through and get things positioned where I want them. Power cord is good. I think the air compressor can probably go up under the machine a little bit. And I'm gonna want the hose here to kind of go up and over like this. I'm going to put the signal lamp straight up and down and then tighten the Allen bolt up under here. So that will indicate whether the laser is on or not. I do want to go ahead and turn on the chiller and that will power on as soon as the laser is turned on. I now have the laser in the general area that I want it to be in. Let's go ahead and do a level, and then I will lock down the wheels. So if I place a level here in the middle, I can see that this side over here is a little bit high, and so on my wheels, I'm gonna to want to pull, uh, well, lock the wheels, but on my feet, bring those feet up just a little bit and level this out. I now have the Thunder leveled out. It's time to turn this machine on. So what I have here on the side, there are two different power switches. There is the main power and the laser switch. So I'm gonna turn on the main power first. Now, if nothing happens, it's because the emergency stop has been pressed. All right, now everything is turning on. 
the laser just homed itself, which is good. If we come down here, we can see that uh, everything has initialized. We can move the bed up and down. Very nice. These should control left and right. All right, everything there seems to be working well. Now, we need to go ahead and turn on the laser switch, and that is going to allow the chiller to turn on. If we step over here, this should beep in just a moment. There we go. Got some beeps. All right, it's starting to pump the water into the tube over here, which means it may be kind of hard for us to see, uh, but the level is going to drop down, and it did. It dropped from, you won't be able to see it, but from here all the way down to here. And so I need to actually fill that back up in just a moment. I also need to open up uh, the tube over here and see if there are any air bubbles present. So. Let's go ahead and check that out. I'm seeing two air bubbles bounce around. There's one right there, and then one right over here. So I should be able to reach down and grab this tube right here and squeeze it, and that bubble should go away. Yep, there he goes. All right, just shot it down, and it looks as though the other one has also gone. I'm going to squeeze it one or two more times just to make sure all those bubbles are gone. Yep, seems as though they are out of the tube. And lock that back as it needs to be. Now I move the chiller a little bit further so we can hopefully see that level. Should be here, but now it's here. So we have to put a little bit more in there to fill it back up. Because my computer is a long ways away from the laser, I'm using the ethernet cable down here. And so I need to go in and change my ethernet settings real quick. Let's go ahead and press menu, and then scroll down here to the IP config. I'm gonna enter into that. Press menu over to the third one right here. And then I can click that up to a two. And then uh, let's see if I just press enter on that. Okay, and that hopefully will save it. Um, escape out of that, it should be good to go. Now that I have the laser talking to light burn on my computer, it's time to do our test engraving. So I'm gonna place an eighth inch piece of Baltic birch down here. I'm gonna go into my menus and tell this to auto focus. It's gonna bring the bed up to the point that it should be at. I can take my focusing test here and see that it is perfect. So we should be good to go. Let's close the lid real quick. I know there were tons of steps to get this laser from a crate out by the road to working here on its first engraving test inside of my workshop. I'm looking forward to having this machine doing a lot of work in the future, so definitely stay tuned for more videos. If you have questions or comments, leave those in the comments down below, and I will try to answer them as best I can. And if you want to check out the Thunder Laser, I will have a link to that in the description down below. This laser is very expensive, but it is also professional grade. I paid full price for this thing, and I'm looking forward to starting up my business, and so I will have links to that in the description down below as well. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Workshop, and I will see you in the next video.